attributes. What are they? How do we use them? How do they work? And how are they going to change moving forwards? 2.92 is about to be released and with it, Geometry Nodes is going to hit the mainstream. So if you've not been working with the experimental builds and you haven't used tools like Houdini, the attribute workflow is probably going to feel a bit weird, but honestly, it's really simple. What is an attribute? An attribute is just a string of characters that we use to reference data. For example, position is an attribute that contains the x, y, z coordinate of every point within a geometry. This plane, for example here, this has a position attribute containing four points. So we are working with indices, so starting at zero, we've got zero, one, two, and three. And we can see that each one of these has the coordinates, for example, minus one, minus one, zero, minus one, one, zero, one, minus one, zero. And this final one here, we have one, one, zero. To make this make a little bit more sense, I've gone and thrown these into a spreadsheet. Don't be fooled by the colors. This is just using LibreOffice spreadsheet. I've just set it up to look a bit more like Blender for this. So you can see what I've done is we have our indices down the side, and then we have a, a position, and the V here is just for vector. And then we've got our X, our Y, and our Z. Position is what we call a built-in attribute, meaning that any time that you use it, it's going to be talking about the specific part of that geometry. So in this case, the position of the points. Equally, if you were to use rotation or scale, Blender is going to assume that you are wanting to be talking about the rotation or scale. Now, another thing to consider is that different attributes use different kinds of data as well. So let me just show you through the other built-in ones first, and hopefully this will become clearer. Some of them are built in, meaning that a geometry has them by default, and that's position. And then some of them are reserved names, which means that they get generated at certain points. For example, scale and rotation. These ones get generated within the geometry nodes tree to handle instancing on points. So the scale is going to be the scale of the resulting instance or the rotation of the resulting instance. And both of these are vectors. We then have radius. This is another reserved name one. And this one, the F is for float. So basically like 1.5 or 2.3 or 3000. These are float values. The next one we have is the material index. This is which slot the material is in, whether that's slot zero being the default slot or one, two, three, and so on. And this one's an integer, right? This I is for integer, just meaning whole numbers. Following this, we have temperature being another float, generally measured in Kelvin. Uh, temperature and density, these are usually to do with volumetrics. Next one along, we have got normal. Normal's a little bit of a tricky one because we don't always have it. So normal is currently generated only by the point distribute node. The last one we have on here is the ID. And again, this one's an integer. When you use a point distribute, it generates an ID per point. And this is different from the index. Index is like 0, 1, 2, 3. The ID, they use a very high number, basically, just to differentiate between different points for continuity. So these are all of the ones that we would call either built in or reserved name, meaning that anytime you use position, scale, rotation, radius, etc., as your attribute name, you will be writing to these specific columns in your spreadsheet. But what about other stuff? So on top of the built-in attributes, we can also use vertex groups. We can use vertex colors and also UV maps. Okay, so cool. We can use a few other attributes within Blender, but what about when you see somebody using just sort of random strings of letters and numbers? How does that work? Well, whenever a node outputs to an attribute, it will either overwrite an existing column of the same name. So for example, if you output to the position attribute, it will just overwrite what is in the position attribute currently. And if you're outputting to an attribute name that is not one of these predefined ones, then what it does is it just tags a new column on the end. So Every time you have a new attribute, you get a new column. And these don't necessarily mean anything until you connect them to, for example, position or scale. It's just a way of storing data for you to use. Okay, I'm gonna walk through a little exercise using 2.92 so that we can get a handle of what's actually going on. So what I've done is I have just appended this little tree. It's just made of cones, as you can see here, with some bevels and a kind of cool shader. We're gonna basically spread this around on top of this plane. So I want this plane to be bigger to begin with, so I'm going to scale it 10 times. There we go. 
And quite important when we're working with instancing stuff on other geometry, you need to apply the scale because otherwise your instance geometry is also going to take that local scale. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few subdivisions just so that we can try something with vertex weights. Let's just select some of these and I'm just going to hit control G assign to new group. Now, if I go into my object data properties, this green triangle, we can see that we have group capital G. I'm just going to rename this one to trees. Currently I have my shader editor open. So let's change this to the geometry nodes editor with our plane selected. We can click new, and this is going to create a new geometry nodes tree. As you can see, we've also added a new geometry nodes modifier. The next thing I want to do here is a little bit of point distributing. If we don't use a point distribute node, then what's going to happen is we're going to distribute our object, in this case, our tree across the existing vertices. So point with instance is here. I drop this on and select my object. Here we go. So you can see what's happened there. We just have this grid formation. What we actually want is a point distribute node. So shift a point distribute at the moment, super dense. Let's tweak a few things here. So this vertex group that we made here, trees, trees is now an attribute for our geometry. So the geometry comes through here on this noodle and any attribute related to it, essentially the whole spreadsheet, you can think of it that way. The whole spreadsheet is coming through this noodle into the point distribute. So we can use the density attribute trees, lowercase t. Remember, we need our case to match. And there we go. You can now see that the area that I left out of my vertex group has now been occluded from the selection. Sweet. So I'm also going to make sure that I'm using Poisson disk because I would like to have a little bit of spacing around my points. We go something like that just to make sure they're spaced out nicely. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to affect the rotation. So we can do this with an attribute randomize node. So let's go up here, attribute randomize. What I said before, built in attributes, whenever you use them, you are writing to that column of the spreadsheet. So if I go in here and I type in rotation, then you can see that everything gets rotated by this random value. And at the moment we have a float in here. Something important to note, if you have a float value coming in like this and you're being read as a vector like this, then it's going to plug your float into the X, Y, and Z of your, of your vector. So that's why we get this kind of effect when you plug a float in, but it also has a bit of strength, right? If you use this for scale, you'll get even X, Y, Z scaling. So that can be really useful. Just something to be aware of. So I'm going to change from float to vector because we need a vector rotation and I don't want to rotate X and Y. So let's change our max there. And I'm also going to make sure that we are going a full circle. So that's two pi, or we can write tau, T-A-U. Now we have random rotation for all of our points. I want to have some random scale, but I want it to get bigger around an empty. So let's add an empty here. I'm just going to bring it up so we can see it. So we have an empty and we have our trees. So this is where we can start writing custom attributes to do what we need to do. So let's create two random sets of size, right? So let's take an attribute randomize, drop it in here. And to begin with, just so that we can see what we're doing, let's call this one scale. So again, we're calling it scale. It gets written to the scale. Everything gets scaled. I'm using float. This means that everything's going to get scaled evenly X, Y, and Z. And I'm just going to set my minimum to like 0.5 to one. I think that's probably fine. Just so that we have some little ones and some bigger ones. So this is my small scale, right? So I'm going to call this one scale one. I'm just renaming that to scale one. You can see all of our scales have been reset to a value of one. And that is because this is no longer overwriting the scale column. This is now creating a new column called scale one. Let's bring up our spreadsheet here and we can just start adding these in. So what we've got so far, we have rotation uh, and this is coming from our randomized node, right? And then we've also now got scale, which we can see at the moment is being output as just one in each case. Obviously our list should be much longer than this. Our list is as long as the number of points that we have. We also have now just generated this one called scale one. So sorry, I should not have capitalized these. These should be lowercase. So lowercase rotation, lowercase scale. Now we have scale one that we made. So this one is also from a random. And then I'm going to make another one. So duplicate, bring it along, call this one scale two. Except first of all, we want to see what we're doing. So let's actually call this one just scale. And let's make this one a bit bigger. So in this case, we're going to go from 
1.5 to 5, right? Just make them really big. And then I'm going to rename this from scale to scale 2. So at the moment, we're not doing anything with them. We're just storing these as data, right? So scale. Now we have another one called scale 2. I'm not suggesting that you write a spreadsheet every time you work. I'm just doing this to help visualize what we're doing. Cool. So now I need to mix between these and output an actual scale. So we want to add an attribute mix node. So shift A, attribute, attribute mix, drop this on here. And what we've got is just like a mix RGB node, but this time we're using attributes and we are outputting an attribute. So this is how we can convert our scales, mix between our scales and output to the actual scale that changes the size. So we're going to take scale two, just hover over this, control C, control V into attribute A. Same for scale one, control C, and then control V into attribute B. And now we are outputting scale. So this is the one you can see that is actually going to now change the size because we're writing to a built in attribute. This tells Blender that it needs to do something with this data. I want to get it to, to move around with the empty. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work inside our node tree still. I know some people like to use the vertex weight proximity. Personally, I think this is a little bit fiddly and it doesn't actually deal with the points that you're generating with the point distribute. So what I'm going to do, shift A, input, object info, and now we can pick the empty as our object. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the distance between each of our points on the mesh. So the position of each of our points, and then I'm going to output this as a distance. So this has to happen before the attribute mix, because we want to use our distance attribute as the mix factor. So we need this attribute defined beforehand. I've made some space here and I'm just going to add an attribute vector math node. So let's drop this down here. What we're going to do is we're going to change this from add to distance down here. We're calculating the distance between the position, right? The built-in attribute that tells us where all of the points are. And type B is going to be our vector. We're going to use the location. So this is now calculating the distance between the empty and every single one of the tree positions. Now the output of this, I'm just going to name this distance as a new attribute that we've made. So I'm just going to throw this on our spreadsheet again, the lowercase distance. There we go. And our scale is no longer one. Our scale has been overwritten with that mix. This mix node here outputs to the scale and therefore this column is now being overwritten by that mix node because the attribute name matches. Hopefully this makes some sense. It becomes more clear the more you do it. So I definitely recommend just trying it out. I need to calculate the fall off here. So we're going to add an attribute math node on here. We can change this to divide. And what we want to do is we want to take our distance here, control C, control V. So I'm just pasting that into attribute A and we're going to change attribute B to a float. And what we want to do is we're just going to take the scale of our empty that float value. And this basically means that when we scale our empty, this will affect the fall off of our scaling. Let's come back in here. I'm just going to overwrite the distance attribute one more time. We now have position distance. Distance is then having something done to it and is being overwritten to distance. So we still just have that one column. And now rather than having the mix factor be this float, we can set our mix factor to be an attribute. And you guessed it, it's going to be that distance function. So you can see kind of what's going on here. The issue is that when it gets smaller, because we have a linear interpolation between one and the other. So basically we have two points as our two scale values, right? So scale two is the big one and scale one is the little one. And a factor of zero to one is going to be in this space. However, if you go for a, a factor greater than one or less than zero, then you are just going to extend this line. So at some point this is going to go into the negative and that's why stuff goes upside down. So we need to clamp it. There's no attribute clamp node. However, there is an attribute color ramp. And if we've learned anything from shaders that color ramps clamp. So let's just use this here. So control C, paste and paste. And there we go. Now what we've got is our attributes being clamped correctly. That looks really cool. Nice. Uh, if you ever want to just keep a node tree on screen when you're clicking on other objects, because this is really annoying, you just click this pin, this sort of thumbtack up here, and that's going to allow you to uh, basically pin the node tree. If you want to still see your original geometry, then you need to use a join geometry node. So this is because when you do the point distribute, 
you're replacing the original geometry wholesale with the generated points. Now this can be really useful. Sometimes you want your original geometry back though. So what we do is add a geometry, join geometry node, and we take our original geometry coming in here, drop on the point instance and output our geometry. And there we go. Now we have our proper plane back. There we go. Cool. So there's that. Hopefully this was uh, somewhat useful. I know it was a little bit long winded, but I think it helps see how things work. And especially when you start imagining the spreadsheet, that can really help you kind of visualize what's going on. For me anyway, I like to think that we've added this column and it's a float value, or we've added this one and it's a vector. So the future 2.93 is already here. And if you want to be using geometry nodes, I wholeheartedly recommend that you're using 2.93, not 2.92. Stuff like the, uh, the attribute math node in 2.92 has add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Let me just jump over into 2.93. And the attribute math node in here has every function that we want. Furthermore, we have all of these additional nodes that we didn't previously have. Things like combine XYZ, separate XYZ, attribute proximity, attribute sample texture. This allows you to do displacement very easily. Uh, attribute math, like we mentioned, has everything now. The attribute randomized now has add, subtract, multiply on top of the default behavior of replace, create. We also have a few additional nodes like a uh, simple subdivision being separate to the Catmull Clark smoothing subdivision. Join geometry now has this nifty multi input socket, which you can see is pretty cool. You can plug in as many things as you would like in here, something like that. So that's cool. And also another thing that's really cool from the last few days is we now have a string node. So instead of having to think where are all of my attributes now, what you can do is you can just type in something like position and everywhere you want to have the position you can just go ahead and plug in your string node so this is an input string node if you want this in 2.93 lots of very cool things happening and it's happening all the time let me show you some websites where you can keep up to date with the news so the dev talk is a really good place there's always stuff going on people posting all the time uh, we also have the blender chat this one's very cool a lot of stuff going on here and something really interesting happening that i just found is that we have things being spoken about. These are super early days for the kind of the conception of these functions, but things like inspect attributes becoming maybe a more visual thing in the 3D viewport, which would be very cool, very useful. And then also we have things like the attribute statistic node. This one's being developed, although it hasn't yet been added in. The lookup attribute. So for example, if you don't want to have to remember all of these attributes at some point, we're going to have a proper lookup function. So that's great. And here is some more stuff about that. The spreadsheet, I was talking about it with confidence because we've seen mockups. This was August of last year. And just today, we also got this mockup from Delay with the ID mask position X, Y, Z, random values and seam. So there's a lot of stuff going on. This one's a good one. I will link specifically to this because it has a lot of stuff about things like domain and filter that it's just worth knowing about it. If you want to be kept right on the bleeding edge, then I recommend you jump onto the Geometry Nodes project. I will link this down in the description and just sign in and click the watch project. This will email you with commits, ongoing updates and things related to Geometry Nodes. Every time somebody comments or commits or updates a task, you will be alerted to it. So there we go. Lots of really cool things coming to Blender over the next few months. The attribute workflow is kind of confusing to begin with, but there's a lot of power to be had there. So I definitely recommend getting into it. And it does, honestly, it makes a lot of sense after you've used it for a little while. And especially now that we have things like the string node, this is going to be immensely useful. And as soon as we get spreadsheets natively, it's going to be golden. That's all from me. Hopefully this has been useful and informative and I'll catch you next time.